Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Sky Observer's Hangout from the Adler Planetarium in Chicago. My name is Michelle. It is delightful to have so many of you with me. Uh, I'm the Director of Public Observing here, and I've got a friend sitting yeah, next to me. My name is Hunter. I'm Public Observing Educator here at the Adler. Uh, excited to be here on Sky Observer's Hangout, even if as you can see behind us. The uh, sky is not uh, agreeing with us quite as much today. <laughs> we wanted to make sure we had an out the window view so that everybody knows what it looks like here we're, in uh, Chicago we're, today. We're not on a ship, <laughs> we're on land. <laughs> so anyway, um, we've got some friends joining us today behind the scenes. So uh, answering your questions in the chat is our astronomer friend Geza. So if you see a little blue wrench with a name next to it, that's Geza uh, answering your questions about eclipses and the sun and anything else that uh, you want to know about astronomy wise and then uh, sending us information from behind the scenes is our friend Kelly so uh, if you see uh, the other planetarium's name I believe in yellow mm -hmm. then that is Kelly so um, now Sky Observer's Hangout is our special place here to gather together to nerd out about the sky. It's a very special day to be able to do that. Um, if you want to just hang out in the chat, that is totally fine. We would love to just know you're there. But if you want to interact with us, that's cool too. Send us mm -hmm. questions. Um, just type them in the chat. Kelly will see them. Geza will see them. We'll see them. So we will do our best to answer as many questions as we can during the time we've got available. Hey, if you want to come visit the Adler Planetarium, we are open for business. Uh, Kelly's going to put a link in the chat about how you can buy tickets to come and see us next time you are in person here in Chicago. Um, and uh, But, you hey. know, even if you aren't here in Chicago, you can still make sure to stay connected with the Adler. You can find the subscribe button just below us here where you can check out, you know, other live streams that we do, more Sky Observers Hangout episodes, but also a ton of other content. You know, I know Skywatch Wednesdays are another really popular one yep. um, and kind of a similar topic, right? What kind of stuff you can see in the sky this month. Um, so all kinds of great stuff to be in the know on there. Um, now today we are joining you, of course, from here in Chicago, here at the Adler Planetarium. And it looks like some of you are already letting us know where you are joining from today. So maybe some of you might be here in the city, but maybe some of you might be joining from a little further away, maybe even a place that's got clear skies right now. Right. Uh, so we're very <laughs> curious to hear today in particular where folks are joining from. So uh, drop that in the chat today. We would love to hear from you. Um, it's also a good test to make sure, uh, you know, chat's working and that we can get in touch with you because we really really want to answer any questions that you have um, all throughout uh, the episode today, whether it be um, about observing today, weather conditions where you are, or uh, maybe a future solar eclipse that you might have a better chance of seeing. Do you want to say hi to a few folks? I think so, We're yeah. say hi to you because you've said hi to us. So we've got Dale in Valparaiso, Indiana. We've got Jennifer in the Belmont Cragen neighborhood, neighborhood of Chicago, where we know you're experiencing the same weather we are right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we've got Victoria in Germany who was at the Adler during the 2017 solar eclipse. That is so wow, wonderful. That is Thanks an for awesome joining one. us. We've got Claude Claudia, uh, greetings from Broadview, Illinois. Who else do we have, Hunter? Oh, we've got some folks joining us from DeKalb. The, who just got their star pass and are super excited to come visit. What great news. We'll, uh, we'll see you here in person someday. Actually, and our star pass uh, purchasers, so you can get uh, admission to the Adler throughout an entire year. Um, and everyone who buys a star pass can redeem a coupon to get one of these, an Adler Planetarium special solar viewer, and you just redeem that at our store and you can get uh, one of these. So yeah, thank you so Anytime now much. Through, uh, through April 8th. Yeah, that's Helby Ison. We did not just stash Helby right there in the chat to mention Star Pass. That was <laughs> that was the, that was that person that was helping a, us out. That was a natural so, ad. That yeah, was a, a natural, natural ad. ad there. Thank that's you. Great. Um, so, all right. Anyone else? Just keep telling us where you're uh, tuning in from. We'd love to have you. So, do we want to just dive in? Yeah, I think you know. Keep rolling in with where you're from, but also let us know if you have any questions, um, and let us know if you're able to uh, take a look at the eclipse today. We'll be talking all things um, solar eclipse clips, whether it be partial or uh, maybe you're getting annularity where you are yep. uh, in the United States. Um, we'll be talking about, you know, some different ways that you can safely view eclipses, um, because even if you can't see this one today, um, we've got another one coming up soon. Um, next April, that will be visible across the United States as well. Um, so lots of fun stuff to talk about still. Um, and if you've joined us here at Sky Observers Hangout before, you know, even on a cloudy day, we, we can still have fun talking about space. Exactly. For sure. And if you see me checking my phone right here, it's because I've got some folks around the country 
country uh, who might be sending photos if it happens to be clear where they are. And we know there is a good chunk of the country that is cloudy right now. Mm -hmm. um, but the eclipse has started. So if you see me looking down, it's because I'm grabbing some of their photos if they come in. Um, so uh, mm -hmm. I am paying attention to you as well. So we've got a couple more folks. We've got Nathan watching from Logan Square in Chi-Town. And uh, we've got April, who's nine years old. Hi, April. <laughs> Great for you to join us. Hope you get hope you get a little uh, a little extra credit and <laughs> please give a special absolutely wonderful welcome to our friends at Southern Illinois University Carbondale. We know you're out there too. Mm -hmm. You all are having a special eclipse event in the football stadium right now. So if anybody's down there, um, maybe go check out the festivities over there. They're doing kind of a dry run for uh, all mm -hmm. the fun coming up on April 8th, 2024. So welcome to Southern Illinois University Carbondale. We love our friends down there. So thanks for joining us. We've got Kathy, 74 years old, and in Alaska. So, hey, we get all ages here at Sky. Oh, absolutely. Yep. Uh, all right. So you kind of mentioned that we're uh, really getting kicked off and right about the, the start of the eclipse time, depending on where you are in the country. So I think that's a, a great transition into talking about, you know, when you can see this eclipse today um, and where you can see it from, you know, these kinds of these kinds of observing questions so that anybody tuning in can know um, whether it's a whether it's prime viewing for them today. Yep. So first we'll start off, of course, since we are here in the city, we'll start off talking about um, things here in Chicago, what we'll be seeing here today. Or, so, well, or... Well, I guess maybe not so much what we're viewing today, see. what we should be seeing here <laughs> right now, and at least give you an idea of... Uh, of what time frame we're working with today. Um, and this will also help give you a good idea no matter where you are in the yeah, country of what gonna, kind of to expect. We're right? also hopefully tapping in a couple of those uh, uh, live eclipse feeds that are going on. So mm -hmm. we hope we're going to show one of those too. So anyway. So you can see here, we did get our live stream started a little bit early for here in the city. The eclipse hasn't officially started yet. It'll start in about just about 15 minutes mm -hmm. um, here in Chicago. And, you know, one of the great things about solar eclipses and, you know, why I love observing these so much is um, they're pretty they're pretty extensive events. You know, they, they last quite a long time. So you can see um, even here where we're not getting a huge amount of coverage, we still have uh, three hours almost, almost. Um, of eclipse going on. Yep. Um, and at quite a, quite a nice time of day, too. Man, if only the clouds weren't in the way. Huh? I know. So it's not one of those things you got to wait till 2 o'clock in the morning to <laughs> Right, exactly. See, right, so. not in the middle of the night. So exactly. it's easy for lots of folks to view. And if you are in a part of the country that does have clear skies right now, um, then it's, uh, it's a really great day to do it, especially uh, uh, here, on a, here on a Saturday, too. Yep. Um, a great, great weekend time to go and uh, view an eclipse. Um, like maybe if you are in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, like Pauline is, hey, Pauline. who says that they are seeing sunshine right now. Woo! So that is wonderful. Stay tuned, and we'll give you some tips on how to make sure you're safely viewing this eclipse today. Um, fortunately, like we said, we've got we've got three hours to look. So. Yeah, actually, we've got a safe tip for how you can safely take a picture of the eclipse with your phone. So if you want to stick around, I can help you out with that. So anyway. Yeah, definitely stick around now. Okay, so we've got what we can see here in Chicago, right? Yep. Now let's expand. We'll expand out to the rest of the state of Illinois here, at least. Maybe, okay, now we can now we can see where our friends down in Carbondale are in the yeah. southern part of the state at the football stadium today. You can see that for this one, we've got pretty similar coverage across the state of Illinois. Yep. And I think that this map really showcases um, how widespread eclipses are, how you can see them across this really huge area of the country. Your view might is you know gonna is gonna vary based on your location. Yep. Um, but you can at least get a, some kind of eclipse. Um, today exactly. throughout the United States. Yeah, in Illinois, we've got about 40% coverage of the sun at maximum, so right about that noon-ish time frame. About 40% coverage in northern Illinois, about 55% coverage in far southern Illinois, and we there's a reason for that, and we'll get to that with the eclipse visibility map uh, that we show next. So yeah. why don't we show that? There we go. So um, this is a really great resource um, and we'll be sharing a link to this website in the chat as well. Kelly will be posting that for you. Um, this is a website called Time and Date that has a really great eclipse map. It's got all kinds of information about time, but also astro useful astronomy information, things like moon phases and sunrise times and things like that, but really useful eclipse resources. So you can see here, we are focused on Chicago today, mm -hmm. um, but there's a lot of great information here. You can see actually that path of totality. Annularity. Um, that, or annularity. 
similarity. Thank you, thank you. Streaking across uh, the United States. We can't quite see the, the start of it up here in the northwest corner in Oregon, but passing all the way through Texas, quite a bit of the country, able to see um, annularity today. Yep. Um, and then all these different lines that indicate uh, kind of what percentage coverage you are going to, uh, to be able to see in what part of the country you're in. So this is really useful no matter where you're joining from today, you know, whether it be in Chicago or in Alabama, um, this will be a great resource to uh, go and check that out. So I would really encourage you to see that to see maximum in your area. Yeah, basically the way it works is the far, the closer you are to where that red path is on the map, the more of the sun will be covered by the moon. And we'll talk more about eclipses. But um, so down in southern Illinois, they're a little closer than we are to mm -hmm. to where the sun will or the the uh, moon will cover the sun at its maximum. Um, so that's why it's a little bit more down there and uh, down in Alabama, even probably a little more down there as well. Um, so Lourdes Duarte, uh, little astronomer lovers, JJ, Edward and Angelo and Alsip, they're gonna, they would get the same view we would here. Um, but uh, folks in Texas and, uh, and other parts of the country, they're gonna see more of the sun covered by the moon today. Mm -hmm. And the eclipse has already started. So yep. do, we, do we wanna show a, can we show a live stream? Yeah, sure, here I might need to, I'll switch over to just our view here for a second, but let me pull one of those up here. Oh, so we there can it see. is. Oh, that's a that's a pretty that's good view cool. already. So, Let's show that. Um, you know, unfortunately, we can't show our own live view today, but we do have, uh, fortunately, some other folks all around the country that are offering live streamed views of the eclipse today. Um, here we have one from High Point Scientific. Yep. Um, folks that. Uh, yeah, well, place that you can buy a lot of telescope parts, things like that. Exactly. Um, and so I, you know, I don't know their exact location today, but I would guess they're in the path of annularity. They must be, yeah, uh, yeah, because I believe the company is located, I think, in New Jersey. So it's definitely, <laughs> so, yeah. definitely not going to be. Wouldn't be started yet. Yeah, there. yeah. So it would be much less of the sun covered by the moon there. So I, I'm guessing they must be uh, placed in some very advantageous location. Um, <laughs> so uh, yeah. So hello to the friends at High Point. We hope you don't mind us showing your feed because it just looks really cool. Um, so uh, do we have a different feed? I think we've got a yeah, different one. Yeah, let me see. We have one other one pulled up here. This one is from Time, time and Date, date. as yep. well. Yep. Um, they've actually got three views all at once. So Ooh. actually, I would guess that High Point is kind of close to this, this view in San Diego. It yeah. looks like they've got a pretty similar chunk. Um, you know, passing over over the sun right now. So they might be more in that uh, northwestern part of the country right now. And if you're wondering why the sun looks like it's coming from the top uh, for that for that view uh, for time and date versus coming from the side in another one, it's just that their camera is turned, mm -hmm. that's all. Um, mm -hmm. So they've got a turned camera. They didn't they didn't necessarily try to line up all the camera views. Right. Um, so that's why that just looks a little strange. Um, I always I, like to say astronomers don't always necessarily worry too much about the orientation of their no, images because, no. you know, as I always say, no upside down in space. Nope. So it's okay to have things flipped around a little bit. Yep. Still the same kind of view we're seeing. Exactly. So. So why don't we switch back to the uh, high point view? Yeah, oh, absolutely. oh, oh, that that view it was really cool. Yeah, they were that. starting to to switch between some other ones that they had yeah. there. There we go. There's the high point view. High point hey, you can see some sunspots. Man, it would right. be a great day to actually see the sun <laughs> <laughs> if we could actually see it. So yes, we are here in the at the Adler Planetarium in Chicago. If you're just joining us, um, for those of you here in the city or the suburbs, you already know it is cloudy here. Um, mm -hmm. We are at the Adler Planetarium's Dome Observatory, and we've got the camera pointed behind us, so you can see just how dismal the conditions are. <laughs> just a few minutes ago, there was a good wave that yeah. crashed into the window. Not into often window. that we have such big waves no, here on, a, on no. Lake Michigan. So, so that's that's why we're uh, we're inside today. But anyway, where would you like to go next? <sighs> that's a great question. Well, you know, we're we're taking a look here um, at, at some of these views of the eclipse, you know, and it, it seems like at least a decent part of the country has got some uh, some clear skies. But these views are a little bit different than um, what the what the average person might be seeing at home. Right. Yeah. So these yeah. are views through specialized telescopes. Um, this one, a, a regular telescope with a filter on the front, um, but I also, it looked like earlier on Time and Date's website, they also had a hydrogen alpha telescope taking a look today. Um, so there's lots of different ways that you can view it at that level, but I think it would be great to also include some ways that people can watch this eclipse on their own at home too, yep. if they're in those those more clear skies. Yeah, exactly. um, so let me pull that up here really quick. If you want to 
take that question. Yeah, like we've got so a question we've got a question. In, uh, do we know what the orbital object is that is causing the eclipse? That's an awesome question. This is uh, due to the moon. And the, the moon is in between the Earth and the sun today. So what's happening is, actually, let me, uh, let me get my little hula hoop right here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so the moon's orbit around the Earth. So I've got a little, my little tennis ball here. So the moon goes around the Earth. So pretend that I'm the Earth and this little tennis ball is the moon. Actually, could you hold the tennis ball? Yeah, you want me to hold the moon here? Yeah. So the moon goes around the Earth and it takes about 29 and a half days to go around the Earth once. So the uh, moon gets lit up by the sun and how much of the lit up part we can see is what we call a moon phase. So sometimes mm -hmm. you can see just a little bit lit up by the sun, we call that a crescent moon. Sometimes you can see all of it, uh, the side facing us all lit up, we call that full moon. Mm -hmm. And right now today, what's happening is the moon is in between the Earth and the sun and so that phase we call new moon. New moon basically means no moon. So why don't we put the put the moon right about here? I guess, yeah, right there, there. So it's blocking me. So um, so the moon uh, is uh, for me anyway. It's passing in front of the sun. So as that happens, it blocks our view of the sun. So depending on where exactly you're viewing it from, it might block a little bit of the mm -hmm. sun or most of the sun, or it may pass directly in front of the sun. Now. Right, like I could imagine right now, you know, maybe if I was standing on your left ear, you yes. know, I might have totality there, annularity for today's eclipse. Yep. Maybe if you were on your right ear today, you know, okay, we probably only see a partial there. Right, so what's going on, why we call this an annular eclipse is it comes from the Latin word annulus, which means ring. And so the moon's orbit, I, I showed it as a hula hoop, it really should be kind of a an offset hula hoop or kind of a squashed hula hoop. It's, it's more of an oval shaped orbit. Orbit. It, the moon can be as close as about 220,000 miles from the earth. It can be as much as about 252,000 miles from the earth. But what that boils down to is the moon is not always at the same distance from us, mm -hmm. which means it's not always the same size in the sky. It's not really anything you'll ever notice. Right. Um, but in this picture you can see here, so I mean, these are yeah. these are the very much the two extremes, right? Um, one being it's, it's furthest distance from the earth, one being it's closest. But you can see, you know, all right, maybe if it's up in the, in the big sky that we see every night, right, it doesn't take up a huge portion of the sky. Yep. Might be hard to tell with your eyes, but we can see there, there's quite a noticeable difference yeah. in that size. And you can imagine that that would uh, significantly change how much of the sun it covers. If you imagine that my head is the sun and this is the moon, if the moon is a little farther from you, it's going to pass in front and just block some mm -hmm. of the sun. Now, if the moon is a little closer, it will block, yeah, there we go. It will block, sorry, there we go. There, it'll block all of it. So what's happening today is the moon is a little farther from the sun, or from the earth, sorry. And it's blocking part of mm -hmm. the sun. And so leaving a ring of sun around the moon for folks in uh, that special path, um, uh, uh, in the country. Outside of that path, you're going to see the moon partly covering the sun. And so we've got some pictures up on the screen as to what a partial solar eclipse looks mm -hmm. like and what that annular solar eclipse looks like. Mm -hmm. So for most of the country, you're going to see a partial solar eclipse and a little bit, a lot, you know. Um, and then for folks in the western, southwestern U.S., as long as it's clear out, they're going to see that ring of sun version. Mm -hmm. In April, that's when the moon, on April 8th, that's when the moon will completely cover the sun, and we call that total solar eclipse. So that's the difference between all of them. It has to do mainly with the distance between the Earth and the, and the moon, and a little bit of, as to how big the sun appears in the sky mm -hmm. as well. So, someone asked an excellent question. Does this happen every October, or does it normally happen? That's a fabulous question. Mm -hmm. It does not happen every October, um, but you have to have the right lineup. And let me get my two hula hoops yeah, out. Oh, you thought the one hula hoop was fun. Right. Wait until we get two hula hoops out. So the moon's <laughs> orbit around the Earth is tilted, about five degrees. I've greatly exaggerated it here. So the moon's orbit is tilted. 
So what happens when the moon comes around the earth and gets in between the earth and the sun, normally because of that tilted orbit, if you could put the moon at the blue top right there, if, if I had this far enough away, the, the sun would shine on the moon, the moon would cast its shadow into space, the, the shadow would miss me. It would miss my head if I'm the Earth, Yeah, right? you can see it's kind of going yeah. up above a little bit right. there from this angle. Right, and so it would normally miss. So pretty much most of the time when the moon goes around the Earth and we get to new moon, the moon's shadow misses the Earth. But you can see I've got it where a couple of these hula hoops, they, they cross. Hang on, let me get this in the way. <laughs> there we, there go, we go. There we go. So, but the moon's close, sorry, the moon's tilt if everything lines up where the eclipse occurs in this spot, mm -hmm. that's where you've got where the orange uh, hula hoop is, that's where the sun would be in the sky, where the blue hula hoop is, that would be where the moon is in the sky, and if they line up just right, you get a solar eclipse. And so this, these orbits go, or this, uh, the moon's orbit, that, that cross point does mm -hmm. move. If it, or it, does, it does circle the Earth. If we get it so that cross point happens at new moon, that's when we get a solar eclipse. And it can happen um, anywhere between two and five times a year. Uh, the five times a year is pretty rare. The last time I think that happened was 1936. Um, but we've got uh, at least a couple of times a year when you've got that lineup just right mm -hmm. so that you get a solar eclipse. Um, now it's good to emphasize that while it may be happening with that frequency every year, it's not happening in the same location with that kind correct. of frequency, right? Correct. So, um, you know, in, infrequently would you have uh, a couple, you know, very close together and in the exact same location. What's also really cool is if you've got the lineup to happen for a solar eclipse, either the next full moon or the prior full moon, you also have the lineup just right for a lunar eclipse. Mm -hmm. But if you get to see the solar eclipse, you may or may not get to see the lunar eclipse. Mm -hmm. So we didn't mention anything related to the lunar eclipse for this one because we weren't going to see it here. So it just, it wasn't worth for us even mentioning. Um, but anyway, you get the lineups happening just right for all mm -hmm. that. So those are excellent questions. Um, oh, and other great questions. Uh, both of these are good questions. Yeah. And uh, in spite of the overcast in Chicago, will our sky darken at all during the partial eclipse? Mm -hmm. What do you think? So this, this is a good question and for folks that ha are not are a little bit less experienced with eclipses. You know, they might be wondering, oh, what is this referring to? Like, will our sky darken at all? So in places where you would be experiencing, you know, like next April, a total eclipse, when the sun is completely obscured, it gets, you know, quite substantially darker around you. Yeah. To the point where even if it was an overcast day like this, you'd probably notice, notice a, a, a decent change in that time. Now, with a partial eclipse like this, and especially today where here in Chicago, we're only getting, you know, uh, just over 40% coverage, we definitely won't notice any darkening today. And actually, even if the sky was totally clear, you wouldn't really notice darkening at that, at that level. What percentage does it take to really have a noticeable be start to the darkening. About 95%. That's yeah. where you start to notice. And because it may actually be a little bit darker prior to then, mm -hmm. but your eyes are adjusting to the dark all the right. time. So even if it is darker, you won't notice it nearly as much until you've covered up a good about 95% mm -hmm. or more of the sun. That's when you start to notice it. So next April, um, here in Chicago, uh, April 8th, for that solar eclipse, we're supposed to get 94% coverage. Mm -hmm. We might start to notice mm -hmm. the sky getting a little bit darker. It sounds like only having 5% of sun sounds like Oh, it must be getting looking like night. Mm -hmm. No, 5% of the sun is still, still a really lot. bright. Yeah. It's still a lot. <laughs> so, um, uh, it's, yeah, we, we, we might start to notice it, but there is an experiment you can do. That's what I was going to say, taking pictures yes. throughout, right? So, mm -hmm. if you have a camera app, maybe for your phone or maybe a DSLR camera, set your settings, if you can, to manual mm -hmm. and keep the settings the same. Don't let your camera adjust because our cameras adjust for the, for the darkness. Don't let them adjust. Take pictures in the same direction at the same, at the, maybe every few minutes or so, and then look back at your pictures because you might actually notice the darkness there. So that, that, might, that might be uh, 
Uh, that might be good. So where will the lunar eclipse be? Oh, that's a great question. I, I was I need just to look pulling it up. it up, actually. I was going to pull up the time and date oh, site. Oh, good. So we'll so. look that up for you in just a second. Oh, someone asked, how do you get one of these T-shirts? Well, I, uh. you know, I hate to say it. This is an Adler staff exclusive. So. But we do have some, some Adler logo eclipse shirts. They're a little bit of a different design yes. that are available in the store here at the museum yes. or on their or online, online yes. page. Yes. Um, and that actually expands way beyond just shirts. I think the water bottles are pretty slick, and they have the same kind of uh, the same kind of graphic on it. I, I really yeah. dug the water bottles. That yeah, you can go there. you can go on the Adler Planetarium's uh, uh, homepage and AdlerPlanetarium.org. Look for the store link, um, and then you can go there and you can order um, Eclipse merch there. And by the way, this I have a special sticker on here. I'm saying a special hello to our friends at the Science Museum in Rochester, New York. So this is their little <laughs> nice. logo right here. This is not part of the t-shirt. Uh, so I just wanted to say hi to them. Um, and again, our, a special hello to our friends at Southern Illinois University Carbondale. I know you're there. I know you're out there. So let's see All where right. that lunar eclipse is. So this is the map of it. It is just a partial lunar eclipse. It will not, it will not be a total lunar eclipse at any point. And we can see that actually pretty much everybody that's seeing the solar eclipse today is going to be missing out on this lunar eclipse pretty much um, yeah. in two weeks so we can see that the partial is really visible in this in this whole red redder area here and if you're wondering it's like oh what about that eastern u.s part are they going to get to see it? it that will be during while the moon i believe is setting and it will just be when the moon is in the very lightest part of the outer mm -hmm. shadow of the Earth. They may have a hard time even telling at all that there's even a lunar eclipse happening. But yeah. that date is... You can is, see here, this is in New York. Yeah. And this is just a penumbral lunar eclipse. So this is not actually cast into the into that main darker part right. of the shadow that right. the moon is cast. Yep, so the, the penumbral lunar the eclipse... Earth is casting on the moon. Yeah, so the, the moon is going through the lighter outer part of the Earth's shadow. It'll just be a little tiny bit of a shading change you may not even yeah. notice. The and you moon, can see it's right at moonrise. Yeah, so. it's uh, it's right at, oh, it's right at moonrise. Mm -hmm. uh, exactly. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, sorry, October right at moonrise instead of moonset. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it's right at moonrise. And the other side of the map is when it'll be at moonset. Um, so anyway, there and you then, go. Yeah, we could also see on here that even in... Um, in, in the best places to see this lunar eclipse, that it is uh, not, a, not, not a particularly significant one. Right. Um, yep. Not for the for the U.S. Now for other folks, um, I think this is actually. The, I don't. I don't believe that this is our location. I think this is actually the the maximum eclipse. That yeah. Anybody yeah. Would be yeah. Seeing. It's yeah. It's definitely not for our location. We aren't gonna in Chicago. We aren't gonna get a chance to see that. So. Best viewing practices for apartment watching. Well, actually, apartment watching of an eclipse, uh, if it's actually clear out where you are, um, apartment watching is going to be the same as going outside and seeing it. You need safe solar glasses or solar viewers in order to view this eclipse directly. Um, so if you've got these, what you can do is you put them in front of your face, then you look up at the sun. Mm -hmm. Enjoy. Then you look down <laughs> and then you take them away. All right, don't look up at the sun first and then put these in front of your face. Don't do mm -hmm. that. Um, but uh, you also could do it for a camera for your phone. So just for your phone. You want to take the solar glasses or solar viewers, cover up with the material, cover up the lenses. All right, then you can turn on the video setting of your phone, take a little video clip, and hopefully one of those video, uh, one of the um, frames in there, frames in there will mm -hmm. be good. Why don't we go back to let me show where the how the eclipse is progressing for uh, one of those oh, live views. Oh yeah, good Let's idea. Let's take a look and see how it looks. Take a look and see how yeah. it is. So Hunter's going to switch over to that in just a sec. Um, looking nice. Pretty good so far. Sorry here. Yeah. I, sorry, I'm getting distracted. I was okay. looking too much on my own. That's all right. Oh, we've got a really great view of these sunspots that we have Beautiful. today um, here from, from San Diego as well. Yeah. Um, so these are from, this uh, view is from timeanddate.com. So um, if you're, if it's cloudy where you are, you can actually join them on their feed. We love it that you're on our feed. That's fantastic. <laughs> so we'll, we'll show some views. Um, 
And uh, the and I'm just checking to check and make sure that some of the friends I've got in other parts of the country, lo and behold, it's cloudy where they are too. So, um, so I'm just keeping an eye on that. One thing that I did want to add, you know, we, we mentioned the the solar viewers is one way to um, view the eclipse, but I know um, last time that there was a big solar eclipse here in the states back in 2017. Um, I know that they were hard to come by for yep. some folks. Um, and I feel like there wasn't uh, quite as much like uh, I don't know, maybe preamble to this one, given mm -hmm. that we have like this bigger total next April. Um, and so there may be folks at home that actually don't have solar viewers with them. And, you know, finding one of those last minute, uh, you know, during the eclipse is one, stressful and two, you know, usually not very easy. So I did want to share um, one other way that you can view an eclipse from home that's a little bit more DIY. Um, this is something called a pinhole projector. Um, so these are really, really simple. I wanted to show, this is one that I made. Um, and you can see I drew a little Adler logo on a telescope on it. Very proud of that one. I was, yesterday I couldn't find it and I was so disappointed. I'm glad that I found it. It was in a bag of colored pencils. Um, <laughs> and so to make one of these, you'll see that there's, if I put it over the window where it's a little oh, brighter, you can see cool. the little hole there yeah. in the foil. Um, and so we put this foil here because it's a little bit better at blocking the light from the sun. Um, and helping to project an image. Now, one thing that can be a little confusing of these, I think a lot of the times when people see these, they say, oh, look through the hole at the sun. No, don't no, do that, no, don't do no, that. No, no, no. An important part of the name here is pinhole projector. Right. So what you'll do is you will hold this, let the sun cast a shadow of that or card. An image. Onto, oh, yeah, yeah, well, the yeah. card will cast a shadow onto the ground, and inside of that, you'll see the little hole there. And it might look like just a circular hole at first, but if you look nice and close, I actually have some pictures here in our slides that showcase um, what a view through a pinhole projector looks like. Um, though this one is not uh, actually a projector that's being used, you can see that when an eclipse is happening, you can actually see the shape of the light source through that pinhole projector. Now, this image that we have here today is not using um, one, of the, one of the homemade ones like this. This is using one of my favorite sources for a pinhole projector. This picture always cracks me up. Um, they are using what looks like, I'm pretty sure is a Ritz cracker. Yeah. Um, using the little holes in a Ritz cracker. I don't know if all those, will, might have to poke them through with a little toothpick or something to make sure the there's no crumbs the exactly yeah, maybe yeah, a little yeah. salt in there or exactly. something exactly. but if you know maybe if you're not the crafty type there's lots of objects you can use at home some other kitchen objects i know like i've seen people use colanders before yeah. um to uh to make pinhole projectors so there are a lot of options and i love this picture that you took michelle where you can even use your hands you can see that this one was not taken during an eclipse, this one was taken inside, yep. but fortunately, some of the uh, lights inside the museum are star-shaped. Right. Um, and so you can actually see that shape just by casting the image through your fingers. So what that's showing is we have a, a, some lights in the ceiling that have five individual little LED bulbs in the shape mm -hmm. of a star because, of course, the other planetary was going to have star-shaped <laughs> lights. Um, so then I got right underneath it, and I, I interlaced my fingers like this and made little pinhole spaces in between my fingers. And then you let the light shine down from the light bulbs, the sun, whatever. And mm -hmm. then you project the view down onto a, a piece of paper, the ground, a carpet, whatever. And you just have to play with the spacing between your fingers. Again, you're not looking through the holes. Mm -hmm. You're projecting. It's an indirect way to see. Um, the eclipse. So someone's asking, will we have dimming of light at all here in Chicago? Unfortunately, the short answer is no. Um, <laughs> so no, the, you have to have the sun covered about 95% at least mm -hmm. before you even start to notice that it's getting even a little bit darker. Mm -hmm. uh, but someone asked a great question, the difference between a solar eclipse and a lunar eclipse. Mm -hmm. So here I can get my trusty uh, uh, moon ball here. What a solar eclipse is, What's happening today? Why don't we show the? Yep, I was uh, just gonna pull put the this up. picture up yep. that shows uh, kind of how a solar eclipse happens. Yep. So a solar eclipse is when the moon passes between the Earth and the Sun, and the moon's orbit is lined up just right that the uh, the moon passes in front of the sun. So the sun shines on the moon. The moon casts a shadow into into space, and if it intersects the Earth at that point, and you're underneath that shadow at just the right time, you get to see the solar eclipse. What a lunar eclipse is, is when the moon comes around and 
passes through the shadow cast by the Earth. So the sun shines on the Earth. The Earth casts a shadow into space, and the moon passes through that shadow. That's a lunar eclipse. So uh, if we've got the arrangement just right for a solar eclipse, then the full moon just prior or the full moon just after, you've got the arrangement right for a lunar eclipse. And the reason we aren't really concentrating a lot on the lunar eclipse is for the most part, for most of the country, we're not going to get to see that associated lunar eclipse, which is on October 28th. Um, but if if you happen to be in a part of the world where you you, you might get to see it. So um, anyway, so yeah, and, if, and if you are interested in learning more about lunar eclipses after this show today, yeah. um, we do have one from just a little over a show from just a little over a year ago, maybe a year and a half ago, mm -hmm. um, that was uh, a live view of a lunar eclipse. Yeah, it was um, a so beautiful view. Go back yeah. and check that one. Yeah, it was a really nice. Yeah. it was a really Nice eclipse. Lori Rourke says, once I saw the eclipse, a bunch of little eclipses on my patio filtered through the leaves of a tree beside yeah. it. That is exactly right. If it's clear where you are right now, go outside, look underneath the trees and bushes because if you've got leaves, because the little pinhole spaces in between all the leaves and in the leaves themselves, those act like little pinhole projectors. And those are showing uh, little individual images of the solar eclipse. Um, so what uh, Hunter's got on the screen is the arrangement between the sun, the moon, and the earth during a, a solar eclipse. Mm -hmm. So why don't we show where the live feed is for, uh, yeah, for yeah. one of those. So we'll go back to, to showing the live view. There we go. Looking nice. Making its way across there, marching yeah. along. This is slow. This is, I mean, as far as a, a, an astronomical event is, this is a slow one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah, but I think that's what, what I think what makes uh, what makes the eclipses so great and what uh, helps bring like a lot of people together to view them. Yeah, exactly. We've can we get a, yeah? Can we get question. solar viewers for the April one from the Adler through the mail? Yes, you can. We've got them uh, available through our store. Mm -hmm. So if you want to uh, go on our website, adlerplanetarium.org, and uh, our store site, you absolutely can order solar viewers mm -hmm. uh, from our store. Yeah. Yep. They we would love them. to send them to you. In stock now. Yes, absolutely. Because you know, one thing that I would like to mention is that. Um, you, you know, even when sourcing solar viewers and, and you know, using your best safe practices, um, there are some situations where there have been people that made counterfeit solar viewers. I know you mentioned that a lot of the times they're actually too dark rather than too light and damaging your eyes. Um, but there can be some, there, there are some folks out there that are, uh, yeah, kind of creating these counterfeit ones. Yeah. So one thing that we always encourage, you know, if you're buying them through our site, then you know that those will be um, a safe source. Um, but you can also um, head over to the AAS's website, um, the American Astronomical Society. Can we, and, can we bring up that site? Um, uh, yeah, here, I've got the link here somewhere. And I think uh, Kelly will post that in the chat yeah. as well. We have a link to their, um, their well, eye safety page. Yeah, we'll show you exactly where to go to, mm -hmm. to get the list of reputable safe solar glasses and so uh, eclipse.aas.org uh, is the website all right why don't we share so yep. this is the page kind of all about viewing solar eclipses safely from the AAS um, and if we scroll down here you will see a link to suppliers of safe solar filters and viewers um, and if you go to that, um, it will show you not only places to get viewers, but you know if you are interested in getting things for binoculars or a camera or something, they've got all those filters as well. Um, and so this is a this is a great place to look for uh, for for making sure that you're staying safe because it's it's really important. If you could do me a favor, scroll back up mm -hmm. and hit the home page. So up the upper left, you hit that. There you go. And then all right, so. Um, go to the eye safety drop down and just click the eye safety drop down. There you go. And it says uh, yeah, suppliers, suppliers of safe solar viewers. You can click that. There you go. The There's Great. the same page. It's a good so, pathway for it. Yep. Use the links directly from that page mm -hmm. to go to the actual vendor locations. Don't just search for these names online just, just in general because you may or may not get to the correct uh, uh, sale page that has the legit solar glasses and solar viewers. So mm -hmm. use these links because what the American Astronomical Society has done is they have vetted all of these vendors and to make sure that their stuff is legit. Mm -hmm. And so um, I, I cannot stress that enough, but definitely get your stuff early. So if you missed mm -hmm. out on getting it for this eclipse, 
definitely get them early. I would say prior to January mm -hmm. if you can, because they're going to start selling out. Yeah. Yeah. It'll be and it'll be tougher to find them for the April eclipse than it will be for this one. Exactly. Um, yeah. The total eclipses definitely get. Um, a little bit more coverage yep. than, than the annual ones or so other partials. So the, the question just came up, when will it be visible in Chicago or did it already pass us? Mm. Well, if we could see the sky right now in Chicago, which if you take a look, we're on the lakefront in Chicago, so it is completely cloudy, but the eclipse is happening now. So it started at 1037 Chicago time and these times are good for Chicago. And the peak is at 11.58 a.m. Central Time, and then it ends at 1.22 p.m. So if by some miracle you get a break in the clouds in the direction of the sun, if you happen to have safe glasses mm -hmm. or a pinhole projector, you can project an image, grab a view. Um, yeah. I, we don't know how long it's going to last Close, for you. <laughs> closer towards the end of it, you'll be more likely to get a to get a chance to see it here in Chicago. You know, it does Ooh. look like the, the bad weather is predominantly focused here in the morning. Um, so if you're like more on the west side of town and um, it's, you know, one o'clock, you might be able to get a, a little bit of a glimpse of it here. Now. I have a couple of images that have just come nice, in for some nice. friends. So give me a second. It'll take me a second to get those up. I'm going to put them Worries. in, uh, I'm going to put them in our, uh, our Slack. Our yeah, that's great. Public observing Slack. Mm -hmm. So give me a second. So I'm talking through this. So here's, <laughs> there's one and and just as a reminder, if anybody has any questions today, how you can view it from your location, um, any other questions about eclipses, how they happen, you are always welcome to um, post those in the chat today. So, so I just uh, grabbed it. Yep. So if you go to the public observing Slack, so we're just talking through it. So we're doing this on the fly. <laughs> yeah, we. And we is. Michelle just yesterday said to. Anybody that is that has taken a view across the country, please help us and send us yeah, some news because exactly. it doesn't look like we're going to see it from here today. Um, so we can see somebody's getting at least a little bit of a glimpse through. Clearly, it's still pretty cloudy where they are as well, um, but they've got a little bit of a glimpse of the eclipse there. And actually, to the to the north here in Chicago, I can see that the clouds are at least lighter in color. They're more white than gray. Yep. I got another um, so one. So that is good. That so is good. these two pictures came in from. Uh, Ooh, this is a good one. Yeah, that one's good. So mm -hmm. that that second one that came in from a friend of the Adler Planetarium uh, down in Texas. So that is the view in Texas just a just a couple of minutes ago. And the other one that we showed was also from a friend of the Adler Planetarium. Um, and I'm not sure exactly where this picture was taken. So we'll just say from somewhere in the United States. <laughs> but this one is definitely from our friend down in Texas. So hello to our friend down in Texas. Um, now, are they in the path of annularity today? I where, don't where they're think located so. In Texas? No, I think there, Dallas I think, is a little outside of it, right? Yeah. So I, I think, think San Antonio is the big city in Texas that is I in think the so, path, yes. right? I know that this particular person is not in the uh, mm -hmm. path of uh, annularity. So anyway, they're getting a nice view down there in in, tech, in parts of Texas right now. It's great to see that, yeah, at least, at least some folks are able to see it today, yeah. even if we are uh, missing out. We still like seeing that other people are getting a view. That's so cool. We liked, uh, we, had, we had some pictures sent in from uh, one of our telescope volunteers as well. Not of the eclipse today, um, but of some eclipses in the past to kind of give us a little bit of hope on this cloudy day. You know, I don't think the hope worked, unfortunately. Um, <laughs> but some pictures of some solar eclipses in the past glimpsed uh, through some clouds. So yeah. maybe folks could try these uh, later today if it clears up a little bit around 1 o'clock. But I thought they were at least some nice landscape shots with a little bit of a partial eclipse uh, visible here in uh, both of these two pictures. I think this, this one's that a pretty was great cool. image. Yeah, That's that cool one image. I believe was in 2021, if I'm not mistaken. I think so, because yeah, this looks like right, right in the morning. Yeah. That, out over the lake. That eclipse, the sun rose eclipsed, mm -hmm. uh, partly eclipsed. And so that's when uh, our friend of the Adler, Bill, uh, one of our telescope volunteers got to take that picture. Mm -hmm. So yeah, pretty cool. He was down on the lakefront, not too far from us. All right. So how are we all doing? I think we're doing great. Oh, 
Looks like we have another question oh, coming in from the chat. Oh, how long do we have before the moon has moved too far from the Earth to oh, no longer have total what eclipses? What a good question, because I think this is one of my favorite things about eclipses is highlighting this difference between the annulars and the totals, and that such a small change in the, the distance that the moon is from the Earth can really significantly change our ability to see these total exactly. eclipses. Did you all just see that wave? I, that was a big wave. That was a really big <laughs> I wave. I saw it in the view. I'm like... <laughs> I, I haven't jumped yet worried that it was going to hit me or anything. <laughs> anyway, sorry, we get distracted easily. Um, but uh, So yeah, <laughs> it is like this very s slight change in the moon's location in its orbit can make the, this big difference in what we see, and every Every year, technically, the moon does move a little, little bit further away from a us. A little bit, about an inch and a half a year. So then you go, oh wait, then if it's if the moon's moving away from the Earth at about an inch and a half a year, so approximately the rate that your fingernails grow, how long will it be before the moon is permanently too far from us to give us total solar eclipses? And the answer is 600 million years from now. So you've got some time. Uh, yeah, <laughs> so I was going to say, I hope I'm not still around. <laughs> this will not happen during our lifetimes. So 600 million years from now is when the moon will be permanently too far from the Earth to ever show us a total solar eclipse. We will still get annular solar eclipses, but not a total solar eclipse. I got to say, Michelle, your knowledge of all these particular astronomy numbers continues to impress. Uh, there is no way that I knew that number off the top of my head. I am a font of useless knowledge. It's, it's, it's fantastic. Hey, useful so. today. Useful today. Today. Most of the rest of the time, not. But, but maybe today. So fortunately, none of, us, none of us here on Earth today have to worry about missing out on seeing uh, more total solar eclipses in our lifetimes. Except so if it's even, cloudy, but, yeah. but that makes sense. That gives me some confidence <laughs> that even if we can't see it today, this isn't the last time we're going to be able to see it. And uh, while we while we don't have any other questions coming in right now, I did want to talk about one other thing that we were going to um, talk about today, a little temporary exhibit that we have at yep. the Adler, um, talking about eclipses. Um, that is this exhibit that we have in right now, Chasing Eclipses, um, that is really all about people that have been interested in going and looking at these eclipses, um, these you know kind of eclipse hunters that are traveling around the world trying to see them. And we can see that, you know, Maybe this, uh, maybe this is something that's not so new, something that people have been doing for a really long time. So, Michelle, I know that you have, were pretty involved in um, the creation of this exhibit, not only this time, but when it was, it had its first run in 2017. Mm -hmm. And I would love to hear a little bit about like what the inspiration for this exhibit was. I mean, of course, we're going to see be here looking at the eclipse, but a, a little bit of the inspiration on that history. Yeah. So the 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 concept of chasing eclipses, so going to eclipses not just waiting for them to pass over your head, has definitely been something that's been around. It's a relative, I mean, in the grand scheme of things, it's a relatively mm -hmm. recent phenomenon because mm -hmm. you need to put yourself in exactly the right place at exactly the right time. And being able to predict that mm -hmm. involves some pretty complex math. Um, so while the Babylonians were able to start to predict solar eclipses a couple thousand years ago, being able to get it to where you you can know definitely the day, maybe the minute as well, uh, maybe down to the second, that's a little bit more recent uh, update within the last couple, two or three hundred years or so. Mm -hmm. um, but eclipse chasing has been something that's popular, especially in the last 150 years, 100 years. So we have a we have a special connection to eclipse chasing here at the Adler, and that is the Adler's former acting director, I would say director, um, Maude Bennett. She may be the world's first female planetarium director. We're not 100% certain. We think she is. Um, she was our director from 1930, I think it was 37, to 1945. And, and that so, was so that was just the the second director of the museum, right? Just the right? second mm -hmm. director of the museum. So, um, so uh, our, our first director was Dr. Philip Fox, and this is Maud uh, right here. So she loved teaching people about all sorts of things related to the sky. Well, she went on an eclipse chasing expedition in 1932. So the Adler Planetarium sent a few folks to out east, I think, in Vermont. And it was cloudy <laughs> for the folks on the ground. But what did Maude do? She jumped in a plane with some other folks. <laughs> and the plane took them up so they could see the eclipse above the clouds. So someone asked a while back, could you see it from a plane? 
The answer is yes, as long as you're looking out the window and the angle is right. Um, so the, the sun isn't too high because those there's airplane windows are kind of small. Um, <laughs> so as long as the, the angle is right and you're facing the right direction, if you have a safe solar viewers, you could look out the window to be able to see a partial uh, solar eclipse today. So yes, chasing them with a plane is not a new thing. Mm -hmm. um, ever since the advent of air travel. <laughs> so people have been trying to do uh, amazing things with planes. But yeah, the, the, the inspiration for this is, um, it's basically uh, uh, those folks who have chased eclipses in the past and with our own mod, uh, Mod Bennett, mm -hmm. as being an inspiration as well. Yeah, and, and one thing I wanted to mention is people may be a little confused. You're like, oh, 1932, Vermont. We have this picture here of some of some to total eclipse stuff that, uh, that she was presenting, which is actually, you know, just a few years after, five years later, yeah. she's off hunting another one um, yeah. out in the... Uh, in the Pacific Ocean, um, so you can see that she was she was quite well traveled um, going to look for she for was some amazing. Of these eclipses. But that brings up a, a connection to a question some, someone just at, posted: Do you know when the next total solar eclipse passes over Chicago? Maybe you don't want to go chase it. When will that be? You might want to go chase one. You might want to chase one. <laughs> you might want to go chase one because I believe it's what. 2099, 2099. Is that right? yeah. yeah, so that's when uh, totality will just clip the Rogers Park part of Chicago, and then the path of totality is is mostly farther north. Mm -hmm. It'll go from northwest to southeast, passing over a little bit of the Rogers Park neighborhood in Chicago. So. If you want to see a total solar eclipse, you may want to go actually yeah, the, travel the, the, the paths really are, are, are pretty narrow yeah. for where totality actually occurs. You know, such a huge bar, part of the country sees this partial eclipse, um, but really a pretty small portion does experience totality. So someone asked another question that is really kind of amazing. What is the spiritual meaning of eclipses? Mm -hmm. Realizes it's, it may be astrology that we're talking about, but maybe we notice something worth mentioning. What I love to tell people is everyone has their own experience during a solar eclipse mm -hmm. or even a lunar eclipse. Um, it's, it's incredible to know that for a very brief moment in time, there's a direct lineup between you, the moon, and the sun, mm -hmm. or, or the sun, the earth, and the moon if it's a lunar eclipse. And But people have had uh, very interesting experiences in, in the past, and they've thought of eclipses in different ways. The, the Chinese, several thousand years ago, thought a dragon was, was eating the sun. Mm -hmm. And so during a, a solar eclipse, during a total solar eclipse, during totality, they'd go outside, they'd bang the pots and pans to scare the dragon away. Mm -hmm. And they would light fires and shoot arrows at the sun to try to get the sun to relight. Mm -hmm. Lo and behold, it worked every time. <laughs> That's true. That's absolutely true. So it's, it's really interesting. And, and people usually thought of solar eclipses as bad omens. Not everybody did, mm -hmm. but um, they were thought to be bad omens. And so if, some, if an eclipse happened and maybe you went, what could be bad that I could tie to that? Mm -hmm. So it, it is common, even in the era of being able to predict them, people still may have thought of them as something bad in the sky. Mm -hmm. Because you're seeing something you don't normally see. They become... <laughs> oh, that's something you don't normally see. Do we, do wow. we tie the way... I'm so, I'm sorry we to... react every time, but it is, <laughs> they are pretty intense. Anyway, us. yeah, the waves are amazing out here. But, um, so yeah, it's, it's, everybody has their own answer to that question. Um, yeah. But it's definitely, they've meant different things to different people. So. Right. And I think it highlights something that is so wonderful about eclipses is that, you know, these are objects, you know, these aren't things like really distant other stars across the galaxy. It's not, you know, even other planets in our solar system feel very disconnected from us here on Earth. But it's these two objects, the sun and the moon, that we are so closely connected with that, you know, are, are always there up in the sky. And, uh, you know, especially the sun, one that, you know, always shines so strong and is, is so ever present there. Um, and to have such a big change um, happen for these few minutes, you know, you can imagine, you know, even now you see it. And even when you're prepared for it, it can you can be very taken aback when right. you see these total eclipses. So you can imagine what people throughout history have experienced. And so I think that really connects to that spirituality of it 
And you know, one thing I wanted to highlight is I think that you know we there still even is this kind of level of spirituality to it, where I think there really is this very strong community factor to it. And this picture from 2017 here at the Adler is such a, I think, such a great example of that. You can see there were so many people here. And in the background of this picture, I mean, it's, it's you know, your Chicago chances. It wasn't uh, quite this rainy that day. No. But it was still very <laughs> cloudy. And you can see that we still have thousands of people coming together to try and get a glimpse of this. And so exactly. I think it, I really do think it, that it, maintains that kind of that spiritual connection and super dbs fan says i was lucky enough to see the last total eclipse under a, with the, at the path of totality in stapleton nebraska and it That's was awesome. gorgeous i yes solar total solar eclipses are one of the most amazing phenomena that you can see um, and so everybody it, has their stories too everybody. you know this is where i was this is how i experienced it this is who i was with Right, I feel like that's always an important part of the story. Someone also asked uh, just a few minutes ago, um, does the sun experience an eclipse of the Earth? Actually, the Earth can eclipse the sun during a lunar eclipse if you're standing on the moon. On the moon. So if you were on the moon at that point, if if you're the sun, then the Earth would pass uh, in front appear to pass in front of the sun. So yeah, you could get an eclipse of the sun caused by the Earth if you're standing on the moon. Mm -hmm. um, so we've got another question. The moon has a lot to do with tides and water. So do lunar and solar eclipses affect our tides? No, the eclipses themselves do not affect the tides but the distance between the earth and the moon the strength of that pole can affect the the level of tides a bit now is what we're experiencing out here on lake michigan today q wave <laughs> that, was a, that was a good q that was a good q <laughs> um is that affected by the eclipse no the tides on lake michigan are literally about a centimeter tall so this is due to the wind. Yeah, gale the, force winds yeah, here. Yeah, gale today. force winds, low pressure system, cue the bird. Seagulls um, are still <laughs> rocking on out there. Yeah, they and are so, tougher than Yeah, me, that is not sure. because of the eclipse. That is due to the, the, uh, the, the pull of the moon's gravity um, on, the, on the earth and the water. So it's, it's uh, just in general, not, not specifically because of the eclipse. Ooh, that's cool. Yeah, We're gonna show the feed. Let's see, we'll show it to you. We're gonna switch it Just over. another little, oh, that's so another cool. little eclipse update. I like oh. this because we can actually see a few different kinds of yeah. telescopes being used here. It looks like this one is using oh, a H Alpha telescope Nevada. here. Sorry, I'll turn us off for a second. That's so in Utah, awesome. you can see Nevada's getting some pretty good coverage. Ooh, and I love this map too. Yeah. An active view showing where the um, where the the path of annularity is moving yeah. in um, there. So you will, we'll see so that cool. it'll hit that western part of the country soon. Um, and if you are like trying to find a little bit more of this kind of information um, on you know where exactly the path will hit at different times when annularity is going to start. Um, one thing we hadn't brought up yet was the was this awesome Eclipse Explorer mm -hmm. that um, that NASA had published with uh, a few Adler connections, if I'm not correct, with the people that uh, that created the Eclipse Explorer. Yeah. Some some former Adler staff there. So shout yeah. out, special shout out to them. Special Making... shout out to Dr. Mark Subaru at, mm -hmm. uh, at at Goddard's uh, uh, Space Visualization Lab there. So, um, but yeah, that we can see that if we set it to different times. Um, throughout that we can actually watch the, the path begin to uh, yeah. cross the United States so and see the different places that it'll go through. Eclipse-explore.smce.nasa.gov. Yeah, so. and Kelly will post a, a link to that in the chat as yeah. well for everybody so you can check that out. But I thought this was cool to be able to see that and then go back and take a peek at how some of the uh, different live feeds are going. Here's that High Point Scientific oh, one again. So pretty. Making its way across so there. All right. Oh, we're doing so great. Thank you everyone for sending us all these questions. This has just been wonderful. We did actually have a bunch of this stuff prepared in advance in terms of uh, uh, talking about the topics, but you all asked the questions that we wanted to answer anyway. Absolutely. So we would rather do it uh, based on your questions than us just talking at you the whole time. And a great help when we don't have a uh, good clear view yeah. um, of the sky here in Chicago today. You know, it's yep. always easy to keep talking when you when you get to take a look through a telescope, but. Uh, it's uh, great to have the questions coming in today. Exactly. All right, last, last call for questions, guys. Last call for <laughs> questions. We're going to be signing off in just a few minutes. So uh, if you've got any other questions, let us know. Last chance to let us know where you're viewing us from. Um, so if you want to uh, put that in the chat real quick. Uh, are there any side effects from eclipses on Earth or outer space? So 
The short answer is no, except in 2017, where I was for that total solar eclipse, I was in Carbondale. And what we experienced in a very localized location was cloudiness that was caused by the temperature drop of the moon passing in front of the sun and, and the closer we got to totality, the thicker the clouds got because it was really hot, really humid, the temperature dropped, and when the temperature drops in humid conditions, clouds form. And so right, just about right at totality, that's when it was cloudy. And about half an hour after totality, completely clear. The clouds were caused by the weather conditions caused by totality itself. So, um, <laughs> yeah, that's what it is today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, this might be not, a few too many clouds. Yeah, yeah, a few too yeah. many clouds. Um, do we have any New Jersey partner locations? Not exactly, but we do have a New Jersey. There is a feed connected to New that's Jersey. True. If you want to show the High Point Scientific feed, so High Point Scientific is um, a company selling telescopes and accessories and stuff. I believe they are located in New Jersey, but their camera this is located is definitely, yeah, somewhere, somewhere else. not in New Jersey today. <laughs> so if you want to go to High Point Scientific Speed, um, they're having a nice a nice little view of that eclipse. So mm -hmm. I think theirs is out west somewhere. To, or it, it obviously is out somewhere. Um, but yeah, you do have a little, little New Jersey uh, uh, connection there. So... Not official, but for today at least, we're uh, thanking them for having, yes. for traveling to go and take a look at it. Yes. So um, thank you, everyone. So we've got uh, folks in Dallas. Hello. We've got uh, Paula in the Chicago Loop. We've got. Let's oh, see. Viewing from Evanston today. Yeah. So hello from Evanston, and looks oh, like they were with you in Carbondale yeah, in 2017. Yeah, you probably. Oh, so Lila and or L Lelia, Lilia, Ilia. Ilya, I think it might be Ilya. Apologies, Ilya, if I didn't pronounce that correctly. Um, so yeah, we we all remember that cloud. <laughs> <laughs> so all right, um, really quick. Oh, um, mm. so South Africa, the sun will be setting here soon. So um, yeah, so if the eclipse, let's go to the pull map up real quick. The map. Sorry, give so we'll me just see. a second. I think the time and date was maybe a little yeah. bit easier to So read. give us just a Apologies. second. So we're just going to it. So zoom out. Zoom out, zoom out, zoom out. Sorry, big okay. map covers right. the whole world. Yep. So. There we go. <laughs> okay. So basically, this is the entire eclipse map. It, it is not that the eclipse is visible to absolutely everyone at exactly the same time. The moon's shadow is passing over the Earth. It starts from the northwest, goes down to the southeast. And so where you see those colors end, that is the, the, the farthest extent of the eclipse. Mm -hmm. So for you in South Africa, unfortunately, you can see that none of that shaded area is over your country. You will not get to see the eclipse. So the moon's shadow is confined. It is, it is not, it, I mean, it's big, but it's not covering the entire earth at the same mm -hmm. time. So there will be parts of the earth that are not turned toward the sun while the eclipse is happening. So for just about everybody, in, except for a teeny tiny little part of Western Africa, uh, basically everybody else in, uh, in Europe, Africa, the Middle East, the Far East, it is, um, uh, it is not visible. So the eclipse this is the last thing. So we've got the last question that's being asked. Is it visible right now? It depends on where you are. Um, if you are in, let's see, <laughs> any of these places, then yes, absolutely. Yep. We can confirm that it's cloud-free. Yep. Uh, it looks like the path of annularity is just now hitting um, yeah, the west coast of the United exactly. States as well. So, so if you're out there in Oregon... It, it could be cloudy. In it Oregon might be cloudy. Too. In Oregon yeah, right it's, now, pretty, yeah. it's pretty frequently cloudy yep. there in Oregon. So, so. Um, <laughs> and are there experiments specifically for partial eclipses? Not that I'm aware mm, of. That's a good question. I can't think of any. Hmm. Hmm. Maybe Geza might have a, an answer to that in the chat. I mean, I, I do I think that, honestly, the, the pinhole projectors in themselves yeah. are a good, you know, view experiment that also encourages observation and, and really is, is most useful during the partial phase, right? That is when it is going to... Um, All right. Truly the last question. Oh, we love questions. That's yeah, we're suckers. Stop. We're suckers. So, um, 
So uh, with the dismal, oh, okay, second to last. With the dismal conditions, <laughs> is looking at the sky still hazardous? No. 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 If it is completely cloudy where you are, no. There is no hazardous anything happening. Um, th th those clouds are doing an even better job than, yeah. than your solar viewers would, because through a solar viewer, you can at least still see the sun, right? Right, right. Clouds completely block the view. Now, if you're in a look, I don't know where you are, but if you're in a location where you're looking through the clouds at the sun, don't mm -hmm. do that. We're not telling you to do that. That is that is also something that could be dangerous because you could still be getting enough light through to, to harm your eyes. So a good way to know is can you see the circle of the sun? Yes. Should you look at it? No. No. <laughs> if the clouds are thick enough to mean that you cannot see the sun, then it is safe. But um, any amount of clouds where you can still see it is dangerous to look at. I know this is a question that I've seen lots of people ask, like. If it's cloudy, can I use sunglasses? No, no, you still cannot. If you can see the sun at all, then you need to make sure you have solar viewers on. Or, or really use important. an indirect pinhole projection mm -hmm. method. So, and then finally, I know we got this question a couple times. Um, uh, astronauts on the space station. If the space station passes through the moon's shadow during the eclipse, yes, they do get to see the eclipse um, if it's done at just the right time. So check NASA's website after the eclipse if the astronauts on the space station got to see it they will surely post photos mm -hmm. um either of the shadow on the uh, from the top down mm -hmm. um, or mm -hmm. from their view of the sun it just depends on if the orbit of the space station took it through the shadow of the moon at that point it may or may not i don't know what their what their orbit is um right now but um so oh wait hang on so I've got the whole good. one last, I'll just hold this up. <laughs> so <laughs> we got oh, this, too bad. there you go. So that's a view, a picture I just got. We will call that. I take it that that looks like some, some natural pinhole projection yeah, to the trees, I think. They got yeah. some, some uh, pinhole projections using a tree or some bushes and nice. stuff. So thank you to friend of the Adler. Um, <laughs> elsewhere where's, in the country. Where's that one from? Uh, not listed? Not listed. Not Location. listed. Well, we could um, probably reckon, you know, that's pretty good coverage. I would say they must be at least pretty far west. Maybe This is maybe yeah. a, a non-Texas friend of the Adler. Yes, yes, probably. <laughs> so, all right, folks. Oh. We, we planned on 45 minutes. You got us for over an hour because we just love your questions. Thank you. <laughs> um, we will leave you with uh, some links if we want to throw the, the links to the live views from elsewhere, the live feeds. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll throw those in the chat. Go enjoy the eclipse wherever you are. If you happen to be seeing it directly, awesome. If you're online and it's cloudy where you are or it's just not visible in your area, mm -hmm. enjoy it online. Thank you for sharing this time with us. Mm -hmm. We really appreciate it. We Any will, last words? Oh, I just wanted to add, you know, we will be leaving the stream running in the off chance that we get a view at any point today. I will be hustling to get it set up. Yep. Um, I don't have high hopes, no. but uh, we will keep it running just in case. Um, just without us here uh, hosting. Yeah. So, so I we'll think still be last here. things that I want to say is thank you all so much for joining us today. Um, I hope that the tips that we gave you today were either useful for today, if you were in a spot that um, was was cl more cloudless uh, for for this eclipse, or will be helpful for you on April eighth yep. when we have a total solar eclipse passing um, not only through the United States but even through Illinois here yeah. in Southern Illinois. Um, so we've got lots more exciting eclipse content. Content. This is not the end. We got six more months of it, yep. and I am still excited for six more months of Eclipse content. So thank you for coming. And thank you for joining us. We love this. And uh, Hunter and I will see you in Carbondale, Illinois, on April 8th, 2024. Yep. And uh, we'll have other staff here. We'll see you on Monday, April 8th, 2024, here at the Other Planetarium in Chicago. On behalf of all the staff, on behalf of Gaze, Kelly, and everybody who supports us, thank you so much. We really appreciate it. We could not do Sky Observer's Hangout without our wonderful audience. Yes, we really appreciate you all coming. We'll, we'll leave a link for a feedback survey in the chat. Um, and so if you have any feedback for us, um, we really appreciate it. You can even recommend things like um, future episode, like topic ideas. Because yeah. um, sometimes it's about big events like eclipses, but sometimes it's uh, just kind of throughout the year we'll do shows about all kinds of astronomy topics. Yep. So leave some of those in there if you think that's fun. We Hit really, subscribe below. And we really do read that survey. 
said, really definitely do. give us some ideas. Mm-hmm. This doesn't have to be just from us. I've gotten so. some good ideas from in there, yeah, actually. Sure yeah, there's been have. some really good recommendations. So uh, make sure to subscribe to keep up with all of our content leading up to next April's Eclipse. And other than that, thank you all so much for, uh, for coming today. Thank you, everyone. Goodbye.